one of the main strengths of the Go language is its standard library. So when a breaking change shows up in one of its most used packages, people will talk about it. Sure, JSON might not seem like a very complex topic, and it might sound like a minor update, but this is actually one of the most significant changes to Go score tooling in years. Let me explain. The original JSON package has served well for over a decade, and it was good enough for most use cases. It was also notoriously slow when it came to unmarshalling, limited in flexibility, and awkward to extend. So instead of trying to bolt new features onto a legacy design, the Go team started fresh. The result is JSON v2, arriving experimentally in Go 1.25. This is a complete redesign that splits responsibilities across two layers, JSON v2 for the high-level stuff and JSON text for low-level streaming control. Together, they fix years of design debt, bring massive performance improvements, and give you actual control over how your JSON is handled. You still get your well-known Marshall and Unmarshall, but now you also get a lot more utility functions, streaming decoders, and composable options. You get proper formatting tools, case-insensitive matching, better tag semantics, and decoding up to 10 times faster in some real-world cases. And what's even more exciting is that you're not forced to wrap everything in a custom type anymore, just to encode specific types or handle unknown fields gracefully. The default behavior has changed too. In v1, a nil slice was encoded as null. In v2, it becomes an empty array. A nil map used to be null, now it's an empty object. Byte arrays used to serialize as arrays of numbers, now they're base 64 strings. You can toggle this back to the old behavior using options or struct tags, but this means if your clients expect specific formats, you need to be careful or very explicit. And if you're dealing with UTF-8, take note that v1 silently allows invalid characters in strings, while v2 doesn't. That's a good thing since your data probably shouldn't be garbage, but again, it's something to be aware of. Performance-wise, v2 is a clear win, at least on the unmarshalling side. Benchmarks show it can be between 2 and 10 times faster, and that's not a minor improvement. It's not just about raw speed either. With the new streaming APIs, you can turn what used to be quadratic time complexity operations into linear complexity. The Go team mentions a real-world case where switching to the new interfaces made JSON parsing 40 times faster. That's the kind of gain that pays for the migration work. Of course, we are talking about small improvements in the grand scheme of things, but it's really interesting to see how the Go team is able to make an already fast language even faster with every iteration. But there is also a catch. None of this is stable yet, and the implementation might break some stuff. This is something Go devs are not really used to. Normally, you can update your Go version, recompile, and move on with your life. This time around, you'll have to opt in using the experiment flag. Turning the flag on makes the v1 package use the new JSON implementation, which is faster and supports some options for better compatibility with the old marshalling and unmarshalling behavior. So, Go is finally addressing one of the longest standing weak spots in its standard library. Let me know your thoughts about this change in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and until next time, thank you for watching.